Greetings, my name is J. Peter Brzezzi, and you're watching a brief demonstration from my SharePoint 2010 Administration Training Course. All right, so here we are on CRF SharePoint, and if we just go to our Central Administration site to start with, we're going to take a look at our Application Management, and then you'll notice under Web Applications, we have this option here, Configure Alternate Access Mappings. Now we currently already have a SharePoint site that is set up with an alternate access mapping for the internet. So first let's take a look at web applications. Our SharePoint 80 site has been extended and is now set up as an alternate access mapping with different authentication provided so that you can access it from the internet but in a different way than you would access it from the URL that's located here. Now you might be wondering, well, where is the additional alternate access mapping URL? If we go to Application Management and we go to Configure Alternate Access Mappings, you can see here that the Alternate Access Mapping Collection for SharePoint 80 indicates that we have a CRF SharePoint site and we have the www.carvedrockfitness.com site. Notice this is part of a different zone. So if we look at the public URLs, you can see here that we have five different zones. The default, the intranet, the internet, the custom, and the extranet. Now we can move these around if we want. If we wanted to put the default somewhere else, make that intranet, and then put internet as extranet, we can put these wherever we choose. And that's because these different listings don't directly connect to anything substantial. This is just a way of letting SharePoint know that we have these alternate access mappings so that SharePoint has the ability to ensure that the URLs work properly when individuals connect with SharePoint. But simply creating additional URLs is not the answer when we want to have the same site accessed by different URLs with different authentication involved. So let's illustrate what that means when it comes to our SharePoint 80 web application and site collection first and then we'll actually extend our intranet site for an extranet.carvedrockfitness.com URL as well. So for starters I'm going to jump off of our server here let's jump over to a client system and let's access both of these sites from the client system. Alright so we'll open up our Internet Explorer and we'll start off by going to our CRF SharePoint site. All right, and very good. So because we're locating this site internally from our client, it automatically is using NTLM and using Windows authentication. So it allows us to access the site and we're using the SP admin account for the access. So it lets us know this is our internet SharePoint site but we're accessing it from the internal URL. Now, this part of the URL, the CRF SharePoint, was set up on the DNS server itself so that we would have this kind of access. But if a person was accessing from the outside, they would type in www.carvedrockfitness.com and they would get a Windows security screen, depending on the authentication mechanism that you have in place, and then in this case we could just provide our same credentials and it's the exact same site. Now we could have provided different credentials in fact this could have been an HTTPS connection we could have used claims based authentication so there's a lot that we could have done with this www site and that's because again we've taken the initial SharePoint site that we created and this was done when we first installed SharePoint and we walked through the wizard for that first site collection and so this is the site that was created. You'll note that we only changed this one thing now we say Internet SharePoint site. And just to illustrate how these two are linked together if we edit the page and let's say we just change the color from red to something like a bright green and we refresh this page 
you notice that it changes here as well. So the site content itself is not in question. It's all linked to the same content. However, we're going to go back over to our SharePoint server and we're going to discuss how that content is created into a different IIS website. Two different sites means you can have two different authentication, but the content is linked together in the sense that when you make changes to one, you're making changes to the other. The content is really connected in that web application. So that's a whole lot better than maintaining two separate sites. Now in order for this to work, there are a couple of things that you have to set up and to make sure are configured properly. First of all, you have to make sure your external DNS is set up to point off toward the location of your SharePoint server. And in doing so, you're probably going to have to set up port forwarding on your router in order to allow the access to the site. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training videos, please visit www.trainsignal.com.